The most commonly asked question that, that I'm asked from clients and people refer to me currently is that about volatility. When can we expect some normality to return? What does that mean for my savings and investments? I'm panicked about uh, the market. I'm panicked about what's going to come next. Should I put my cash under the bed? And so on and so on. And that's completely understandable. The emotional roller coaster that we're all going through, be it from a jobs perspective, right through to the success potential of your own business, cash flow, and so on and so on, absolutely means we've all got to go through this uh, roller coaster ride. And that emotion is something which often can lead us to make somewhat irrational decisions. And like I said, whilst that's understandable, it's certainly uh, my role I perceive with the clients I work with to ensure that, that we avoid making those where possible. Now, the way that we do that, of course, is to reassess how somebody views their planning and really have your time skills changed as a result of something such as COVID-19, which has come completely out of the blue. Now, again, for a lot of people, even though the fear factor is there, has it fundamentally changed your longer term vision of when you might look to retire and your shorter term vision of what you're going to spend over the next two to five years? And for most people, it actually hasn't. And therefore, those decisions are still similar. So taking the emotion out of the situation, we've then got to look to make sure that you are planning in the correct way for, I guess, the new world that we find ourselves in. Now, the one caveat I'll give you here is any person who tells you they know what's coming next and when it will happen, I would probably back away from relatively quickly. But that's not to say that an investment professional or, or a financial planner like myself can't give you a, a, a clear steer on some key indicators we can take from uh, historical evidence and of course a feel for the areas of the world and industries which are of course riding volatility better. Now this impacts us all, whether it's your savings in the bank, whether it's effectively your pension, concern comes about your valuations going up and down and, and, and again that's something which in the shorter term you're going to struggle to defend against in its entirety. But if I was to talk to you about the areas in the world that are doing very well, such as, for example, gaming companies, online retailers, pharmaceutical companies, and so on and so on, then again, when you look in your own portfolios, in your investments, your savings, are you aware of what you're exposed to? Have you got a reduction in the areas under pressure? For example, emerging markets or uh, cash, uh, sorry, um, banks, et cetera, et cetera. And if you haven't, how close are you to what you actually have? And again, for most people who I'm referred to haven't got a clue what they've got in the past eight pensions that they've got, but they are concerned about the underlying value. And again, please take help if that is the case. But from a volatility point of view, I just want to share the, the, the graph that I've put up on screen here. And I think this gives us a good indicator to give us some reassurance and hopefully balance against a lot of the pessimism and negativeness that, that is often out there at this time. What we can take from this is a similarity, I believe, to the 2007-2008 crash, where you can see on screen that it looked very harsh here in terms of how it impacted on the market. A very steep, very quick, quite worrying at the time drop in the market. When you were looking at your valuations in that time period, panic by it and people making those irrational decisions. Take it out, put it under the bed and so on and so on. Now what's happened since that time, of course, you can now see is a significant upturn in the market. But at the time, when you're in the eye of the storm, when the panic is at its highest, very difficult for me included as a human being to make those kind of rational decisions. So do we believe the world will implode? Absolutely not. Do we believe there's more issues to come with Brexit, with a US election, uh, with a potential second spike, with the ongoing China and US uh, battle of, of trade? Absolutely. But again, what is your timescale for money? What is the need that you have now and for the medium to longer term? And don't forget, let me leave you with some optimism that out of every downturn comes an upturn. And equally with that becomes the entrepreneurial spirit that particularly in this country we're very good at. The next generation of companies that grab this by the, uh, by the horns and effectively run with it in terms of how we're all going to work and consume. Make sure you're exposed to those areas and of course, tech advice if you need it. I hope that's been useful. There's only so much I can obviously cover, but I, I do want to balance between all the negative uh, information that you've fed and also a more positive outlook. If I can be of use, please don't hesitate to ask. All the very best. Yeah.